James Melendez. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is about the three dominant soil types in the Willamette Valley. Stay tuned. Thank you for joining me. Please give a like and subscribe to this channel. There are three dominant types of soil in the Willamette Valley. I'll tell you about that in this presentation. This rare intersection of world-class soil, in addition to some characteristics of terroir that helped to make the Willamette Valley a powerhouse for Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, and other grape varieties. The soil types that are developed are through the geological period, so very long periods ago, significant events that happened to develop particular soil types that are dominant in the Willamette Valley, as well as greater areas of the Pacific Northwest outside of the Willamette Valley. So a dramatic event, which is the tectonic plates, the Juan de Fuca is subducted underneath the North America plate, scraping off the marine sedimentary material upon the North America plate. Between 20 and 40 million years ago, volcanic activity both in current day Washington State and Oregon State spread throughout the Columbia Gorge and into the Willamette Valley. And in the most recent geologic history, between 13 to 15,000 years ago, were the Missoula floods, a series of cataclysmic floods, a series of ice dams that broke through deglaciation. The breaking released hundreds of feet of water traveling at 80 miles per hour, creating loose soils. Willamette Valley is blessed with fantastic world-class soils. And I would also offer that there's also a component, the enological term terroir definitely explains a lot of what's occurring in the Willamette Valley today. So soil plus terroir, you'll see in this slide here that there are 11 subcomponents that build to create what is terroir. Now, I think this is a good example, this particular Venn diagram to help understand what terroir is. And ultimately, when I think of Oregon, these are some variables you'll look at, say climate, geography, human factors, and so forth, that are unique to place, unique to the Willamette Valley. There are things that can be implemented and things that cannot be controlled. And so I think this example shows many factors, such as a human factors. And I think this is the way to think of Willamette Valley. And this wine country is different from any other wine country. And terroir definitely helps to explain that. While you will find the same varieties in the Willamette Valley and other places in the New World and Old World, such as Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, and other great varieties, that does not mean that they're going to be the same. In fact, these are very different wines. So when people compare a region and say it's, say, for example, Burgundian in style, that is not accurate. And so I definitely offer this model to help us think differently about this region. This fantastic diagram definitely shows and illustrates this plate tectonic movement, the subduction of Juan de Fuca underneath the North America plate. This diagram definitely highlights the activity, the geological activity in the past that is still with us today. And I think this is important to understand how this helped to create the marine sedimentary soil. The material composition of marine sedimentary soil is calcium carbonate, silica, iron oxide, aluminum oxide, and trace minerals. The next major geological events were the volcanic activities in Washington and Oregon State 20 to 45 million years ago. The map in this slide definitely depicts the volcanic flow and some of that goes into the Willamette Valley itself. The volcanic soil content is silica, aluminum, iron, magnesium, potassium, calcium, sulfur, and various trace elements. And the last major geological event in this area would be the Missoula floods. This happens between 13 to 15,000 years ago. And this happens because of deglaciation. This happens over a series of floods. These are epic floods. When the ice dams break, there is in essence hundreds of times greater than the combined flow of all the rivers in the world today at peak discharge. The flood waters are several hundred feet high. They're traveling at 80 miles per hour. The soil is being ground and into fine particulate matter between 0.002 to 0.06 millimeters. 
And so this is content you will find in the Willamette Valley. Because this is such fine grain material, it is easily transported by wind. Just like the term terroir itself, you're gonna find differences from location and even with any site, you'll find differences there as well. You'll also find that a particular soil type may not be present on every single site or you might have all three. So I think this is to look at how we can view the Willamette Valley, the soil of Willamette Valley. And lastly, adding on terroir, the enological concept to really flush out, to build and to understand what makes Willamette Valley so unique, so special. Thank you for watching. Please give a like, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you in the next review. Santi.